do you have your children do chores? Uh, do you pay? And if so, like how much? These are questions that I mull over. Well, not the chores part. I believe in that. But in the pay. To pay or not to pay? That is the question about chores. Welcome to Learning Life, and this week we're talking about chores and responsibilities. Yes, I believe that children have responsibilities within our families, and I'm not just talking about being the loving, kind, respectful member of the family, which is so very important, and those are values that we really are trying to instill in our girls, but also contributing and really being part of it in an active way. Now, sure, our kids cannot get out there and be making money to uh, help, but they can help around the house. And I do believe that that is important. And in those responsibilities, I'm looking at things like chores. And this can be a hot button issue. Oh, my goodness, because why should we be getting our children do chores? Like, wouldn't it be easier if we just like cleaned up ourselves? Absolutely. (laughs) But are we really teaching our children anything? We want our children to be doing chores. I really believe that because we want them to be able to feel needed and feel like they're making a contribution to our family. It is actually an important thing for them to feel like that they are doing something for our family. When we look at why chores are important, we look at some of those key things like helping to feel needed and making a contribution. You know, children do need that. They need to feel like they do belong and that they are part of something bigger than themselves. And chores can enable them to do that. It's also teaching responsibility and independence. And with that also work ethic and hopefully less entitlement. To me, these are all key things that we really can teach through chores. But it does lead to that question, should we be paying for chores? And oh my goodness, are people really divided on this? You have the yes camp that is like, absolutely, when you get older, you have to work. And if you don't work, you don't get paid. So of course we should be paying for chores. Okay, valid points. And then you have the no's who are like, well, you know, when you grow up, you're just going to have to do all this housework anyhow and not get paid for it. So you shouldn't get paid for it now as children. Okay, valid points. So it's really hard to know what to do. And I hear both sides of the arguments, and they're both very valid. And once again, as you know with me, I come to the conclusion, do what works for you. I really like this hybrid approach that seems to be coming about. The understanding that there are responsibilities that a child has as part of the family, things that they should be doing, whether it is like unstacking the dishwasher, making their bed, keeping their rooms tidy, those sorts of things. And then you get paid for additional chores And I've seen it done in two ways, which is either there's a list on the fridge, which has, this is the chore and this is the dollar amount assigned to it. So if you mow the lawn, you get $10, or if you vacuum, you get five, or maybe it's, you've had your responsibilities and these are the other tasks that you need to do during the week. And in doing those, you will earn X amount of dollars. I actually rather like that one. I think it can be a really good balance that we're still teaching responsibility And work ethic, we're still teaching making a contribution and perhaps even bringing in some less entitlement. And I really think it comes down to, as families, what works best for you? Do you want to be paying? Don't you? You know, make it work for you. Help your children with that motivation um, about being part of a family and how they can be going about it. Now, whether or not we pay for chores, I truly believe that we need to be teaching the chores, especially if our children are little. We just can't say to a child, put away your toys. It's very overwhelming for them. What do we mean put away the toys? Look at all these toys. Where do I start? Where do I begin? And usually what happens when all those little questions rise up, we get a little overwhelmed and nothing happens. And this is also very much the case for any child that maybe has some ADD tendencies or anything like that. I find this when I'm working with kids it feels overwhelming. So we need to get in there and it'd be like for our younger ones, this is what we say when we're cleaning up toys. We're going to do this. It goes into this box or it goes on this shelf. We have to be showing them maybe a few times what it is that they need to be doing in order to complete the task. 
Another thing that I like doing is actually taking a photo of the finished product. This can be great for our younger kids. Also those that maybe have some processing issues, like I don't know where to start or like, what does it look like to finish? Well, here you go. This is what it looks like. This is what your bookshelf looks like. Um, these are where your clothes go. Um, these are all really good things. And they can look at them and be like, oh, I clean my room. This is what it needs to look like. Maybe it is uh, a checklist for older kids if I've done this, 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 and this. Now from this springboarding an idea of something that I learned when we were looking at work about changing job descriptions and it was a positions results description. And it was like, I know I've done a good job when, and it lists these different things under the categories. And so I've been introducing this to some of the students that I work with, whether it's tasks like for homework or anything like that, we can do that for chores too. I know I've done a good job when, and this is really what it looks like. It's very simple and easy to do. I know I've done a good job, let's say, cleaning my room when I have, and this is where you list the tasks. Now, it's you don't just sort of list them in any order. You do need to brainstorm, and you do need to put down the order because you cannot vacuum unless you have cleaned up the floor, those sorts of things. But it gives a child to know, this is a good job when I have done this. If I haven't done a few of those things, have I really done a good job? And it is a good motivator because you can see. It's very easy to do and it's great as parents that we can be helping our children to be learning how to be doing these tasks, what constitutes a good job with it and how we can be self-motivated. There's chore charts as well. I've seen many of those around. You can get pre-printed ones that have like specific things. You can create your own. You can get some that sort of have spots that you can fill in. Chore charts can be great. It goes along with teaching the chore or teaching that responsibility of these are the things that I need to get done and how do we do it? I love things like this because it is a visual tool. So many times our children need that visual, something that they can come back to, like that photo of the completed task. Oh, these are my tasks for the week. Have I done it? Has it been checked off? Yes, no, a great visual tool because they're not always gonna be taking it in when we just listen. There are of course different chores for different ages. You know your child and you know their abilities. Some kids are doing things you know, way more advanced than I think, you know, could my girls do that? They probably could. Well, I won't list them now, but there on, on the blog, I have listed in the different age groups, different chores or responsibilities that are great for that age group, things that they can be doing. And yes, start as early as two, <laughs> you know, when we can be training them in this and then we can build up these skills. Now, if you have four, five, six-year-olds that have never done chores, it's never too late to start. But don't feel like any pressure that they have to do this huge long list or they have to do these things. Do what works for you as a family. So what is it that you do in your home? For my girls, they're putting away the silverware, the cutlery. They are cleaning up their table after they're finished eating. The plates go into the sink. They are putting away their toys well, thank you very much for watching today. And I would really love to hear what works in your family or even what have you tried that hasn't worked? And do you pay? And if so, how much? Because I'm also learning here. You know, you can get overwhelmed by, well, you're paying this, that, the other, or it depends on where you live. I would love to hear from you. Uh, just leave a comment on the blog or on the video about what works for you, what pay you might do. So we can all help each other with that. So thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you soon.